Hello fellow option traders, this is Jeff and today we're going to talk about the covered call that I have on GLD. Some of you know that I have had this for almost two years now and I've been very very patient as a matter of fact just kind of forgetting about it until it gets near to expiration for the short call that I have on it. But a while back, and let's we just run back and take a look at the spreadsheet here. Let me explain this a little bit. Way back here on 819 of 2013, I bought 100 shares of GLD at $134. Um, I collected $2.31 on that call, which was a September call. So it was a month away, the call was, and I collected $2.31. The actual price that I, well, here's the price that I paid was one thirty one ninety seven. GLD was at, actually at one thirty one ninety seven back then. Hasn't been anywhere near that so far. Uh, I'm, let me redo this again. I don't know, I had my eyes crossed. Uh, the strike that I purchased was 134, so it was, mm, you know, like two dollars and three cents away. So I collected two dollars and thirty-one cents on that, which brought the cost basis for the trade down to 129.66. And if it had been in the money on September expiration of 2013. I would have made 3.2% off of the trade. Well, as we all know, GLD did nothing but move down practically since then with a couple of uh, rallies, but for the most part, really kind of like hitting it real bad, especially around here of uh, about this time last year. And we can look on a chart if you would like this time last year. Yeah, let's see here. This time last year, yeah, it was uh, definitely sinking. Here we here it is, September of 2014. So it just did nothing but sink, and it's been kind of down ever since, except for a brief rally here, and then back down into the basement, which could you could consider this the basement on GLD. So let's see. Back to the spreadsheet. And you can kind of see that here in my strikes that I was picking, and then all of a sudden I have to pick a strike on 1230 of 2014 at 119. And then we went back up to um, 123 and then down to 120. And now I am thinking about a 118. Uh, I wanted to explain the spreadsheet a little bit, but first of all, um, over we're looking out to September now. It's July, so we go two months out, August, September, expiration. And if I look at the chart, it has not been above 119 or even above 118 uh, for most of this year. So is it safe to do a 118? Well, yeah, you know, I'm not really worried about it because I can always roll it. So if it looks like it's going to be in the money, then I could roll it. So back to the spreadsheet. I selected a 118 strike with a July, I mean a uh, September expiration, which would bring in $1.06 in credit and bring my cost basis down to 121.88. So you can see here, each time I collect a credit, the cost basis is coming down. And originally, it was at um, 129.66, and now it is down to 121.88. So, yeah, close to uh, about $1,000 um, is the total credit. And this return on investment, the return on investment on this original 131.97, which is up here is 7.65 percent but that's a little bit deceiving because if I needed the cash right now I will lose money on this particular trade 
which is pretty much what this if called column here is telling you is that each time uh, I pick a strike and take a credit it changes my percent if called. I'd like to see this positive like it was up here at one time but that's just not happening these days so that's just saying that if you had thirteen thousand one hundred and ninety seven dollars in the bank if you put it in the bank on in August on August 19th of 2013 you will have gained one thousand and nine dollars provided I do this trade down here which is the um, September 118 strike you will have uh, you would have um, an interest of one thousand and nine dollars which is seven point six five percent which I don't know, can't get that anywhere that I know of right now that's approximately three point three percent no three point six percent three point eight percent uh, annual percentage rate can't get that anywhere that I know of but uh, if you had to take your money out of the bank you're going to lose so you got to leave the money in the bank which is what I'm going to do I'm just going to keep hang on to these shares and I'm going to work it down each uh, every time I can like every couple of months here it's this is the kind of the way it's been working out sometimes once a month sometimes every other month um, so that's what I'm thinking of. So if I go back here and look at the chart, uh, 118 is right here where I actually it bumped up here for a couple weeks. Would have had me doing a little bit of nail biting there, but um, not that bad. I would not have done anything because I would just wait until expiration. And, you know, hanging on to it would bring you to here and then you wouldn't have to worry about anything. So I'm thinking seriously about this 118. So um, part two of this is when do I do it? So let's go to the Analyze tab. Uh, this right here where we collected a dollar five credit on it originally and you can see that. Go back to the spreadsheet. Well it's a dollar one actually. Did I not put that down there right? Uh, yeah, it was a dollar five. I may have subtracted transaction costs on that. It's now worth six cents. So the way that Thinkorswim operates is if you want to buy back a short option, which is this is short because we're minus one, for a nickel or less, they will not charge you a transaction fee. So I'm getting pretty close to thinking that nah, I might just like cash out on this and then go ahead and do this 118. Oh, I know what it is. If it was a roll, that's what it was. This was a roll, wasn't it? Yeah. So I rolled. So I had to actually subtract a nickel or four cents or whatever. It must have been four cents. So um, I collected a dollar five for it, but I had to buy back the previous short call for four cents. So that's what it was. I'm not taking into consideration transaction costs here on these trades. So that's another thing to think about. Every time you do one of these, that's probably a buck and a quarter total. So that's not all that much. So that's why I'm not really considering it. But anyway, right now, again, Mark is at six cents. I might be able to buy it back for a nickel. I don't know. I'm not sure. So, um, but it's getting close to that time. I've pretty much made up my mind that I am going to do this 118 strike and it's going to be a September expiration. So let's go over here. Uh, simulated September, here we go. Uh, 118 is um, the bid ask is $1.06, eleven. If I sell it, I can only expect to get $1.06 for it. I might get $1.07. Um, possibly. I'm not going to get, uh, as with bid ask, if you're buying, you're going to pay the most. If you're selling, you're going to get the least. So that's just the way it works. Can you get a midpoint? Mm, I don't know, maybe. So you could go here 
and say create rolling order 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 <laughs> and uh, we could put that up here and do it and well, let's I want to do an analyze analyze the trade that's what I want to do so I'll we'll delete this here it is um, if I rolled July to July 4 it would give me three cents but here I'm saying I want to go to September and I want to go to the 118 strike and unlock it and here it is pops up and says oh you get a dollar two credit if you do that but see I have to pay two dollars and fifty cents in transaction costs whereas if I buy back the 120 for a nickel or less I don't have a transaction cost so it's only a buck and a quarter for this one to sell this uh, September 118 so they're saying right now a dollar two that's a midpoint price could I get it maybe uh, so that's pretty close to this dollar six minus a nickel which would be a dollar one but if I don't roll and I do these as separate transactions then I save a buck and a quarter out of a hundred dollars every nickel counts and when you get to be my age every penny counts all right so uh, let's see what else might I want to this spreadsheet is up not this version of it um, but I probably will have it up mm, tomorrow or later today I'll put it up before I post this to the blog um, it's pretty easy here if you're going to use a spreadsheet like this what I have done here is uh, if I take this and then copy it down here when I do the next trade you can see that the original what I'm doing here is, is subtracting my original price which is up here at C4 and you can see it's a constant because I have these dollar signs in there so that will never change and then the C34, I'm subtracting the new cost basis from the original cost. And then coming up with that and then just saying, multiplying that times 100, which is this here. So we get a $1,009 over the life of this trade. And I would be happy with that particular trade. So if, if I take it here and I go... Uh, control X and copy it down to here and control V then I still have a constant I would have to this changes to 34 no it should change to 34 why didn't that change to 34 huh. what happened come on Excel you're supposed to change this position here Oh, oh well. Um, oh, thank you. Just got a baked pretzel from my grandson. Thank you very much, Logan. Looks delicious. Can't eat it now, though. Anyway, this should have changed, so you may have to change this to um, C36 when you do that. Maybe because there is no value in there. I don't know. But anyway, it's here. And... This this equal okay that changed that one changed to e thirty six. I don't know why it did that. So let's go back up here. E thirty four. Okay. And then this is just a simple uh, calculation taking the um, amount of we're to, what we're doing here e two we're taking this amount and dividing it by the cost basis or the um, yeah the cost basis so that's it C4 this cost basis double click you get highlighted cells this cost basis so that's your return on investment but if you get called if I get called at this 118 it's gonna cost me 3.3 percent I will lose so this money will have been just flushed down the toilet but that will not happen because we actively manage these trades and this one will be 
actively managed. We're always keeping an eye on it. We can always throw an alert out there. Um, but we look at it every day. So just to see how it's doing. All right, so I'm going to save this, and then I'll run it up to my downloads page, and you can take a look at it. I also have, uh, you know, all the trades currently that are open, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, it's kind of a nifty um, spreadsheet, and if you want to do something similar to this, all you have to do to create a new tab on the bottom here is you're going to want to uh, let's see, you can't see that. Let me, do, let me move this up here. You'll want to right click on this tab and say move or copy. And you want to move selected sheets to book weekly results and sheet, you want to do it after that and say create copy, say move to end, create copy, boom. So you can't like just highlight this and copy it. You'll actually want to do what I just did. You want to see it again? Then watch it again. Just back up the, just back it up. So and then you can change this to any underline that you want and you can, you know, use this to keep track of your covered calls if you have any. Just an FYI. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And we're back here to the gold cover call. So that's how you do it. Right click, say move or copy. This is the spreadsheet that you're uh, moving it to. And you're actually doing a copy. So you want to move it to the end. Or you could say after Netflix, but Netflix is at the end anyway and then say create a copy and then bingo there it is exactly the same as two of them are exactly the same highlighting it and copying and pasting it all these formulas change so you don't want to do that okay that's it thanks again thank you very much for watching that again I don't think I said it before thanks for watching have a great day and happy trading